Hello everyone and welcome to another video. A few months ago I made a video about COVID-19 data from the John Hopkins University's repository where we analyze the latest trends and create an interactive dashboard using ClickSense. Today, in a week where new lockdown measures are being applied all across Europe, we'll explore once again the real and latest data, this time using Python Pandas. If you're curious about data science, this video might be helpful. And if you just want to understand about the latest trends and how the cases curves look like, stay tuned until the end of this video. We're gonna go through the dataset and start playing with it. Let's get started. Okay, so today we'll be using Jupyter Notebooks instead of coding in the editor, as it is gonna be much more visual for data exploration. You'll see that just in a second. I will start by running a virtual environment in my labs folder and then installing Jupyter Notebooks. So I'll type pip install Jupyter Notebooks. Once that is done, I'll start the notebook server by running a web session with just Jupyter Notebook. And then you should see the notebook open up in your browser in your local host. For this demo, I'll be using a few libraries to manipulate the dataset, mainly pandas and numpy, and then plotly to quickly visualize the data. You can install them here on the first cell or as part of your library requirements in your virtual environment. So I'll type exclamation mark pip install pandas, pip install numpy, and pip install plotly. And once it's done installing them, we need to import these libraries. So import pandas as pd, import numpy as mp, and import plotly.express as px. Cool, now let's get on with the dataset. In this video, I'll also be using the COVID-19 data repository by the Center of Systems, Science and Engineering at John Hopkins University. This dataset consists of many aggregated data sources and it gets updated every day. If we scroll down, we'll get a list of all of them. Check them out to know where this data comes from. Another really useful resource is their Coronavirus Resource Center, where you can find the latest trends, analysis, and really interesting blogs. In there, they also have an awesome COVID-19 dashboard, which is this one, where they display the current state of the pandemic in real time, so data gets updated every few minutes, and it will help us during this video as a reference. If we get back to the dataset and navigate to CSSE COVID-19 data, which was updated for the last time a few hours ago, we'll find either daily reports or time series data. Daily reports consist of a single Excel file for each of the dates since the first case was reported. Instead, in this video, we're going to use the time series dataset, which includes confirmed, deaths and recovered data. And this is all read from the daily case reports. So in this video, we'll be using these three files right here, Confirmed Global, Deaths Global, and Recovered Global CSV files. If we click on Confirm Global, we'll see we get the time series cases at a province, state, and country region levels. So for the same country and region, for instance, Australia, there's multiple rows. There is also geographical information. And then finally, there's the confirmed cases from the day where the first case was reported back in January all the way up to today. So let's grab this URL and switch back to my Jupyter Notebook. Let's define base URL. Make sure to use raw.githubusercontent.com. Let's define confirmdf as a pandas data frame reading from this CSV file. Let's execute the cell. Okay, no errors. Now you don't need to use print in here. You can just type confirm data frame and execute the cell. And we see a representation of this data frame. We see the first and last five rows of this data frame, as well as the shape. So the number of rows and number of columns and the column names and some of these values. Okay, now let's start with some data cleaning or data manipulation. We're gonna drop the columns we don't need. So for this particular video, I'm gonna drop the geographical information. So latitude and longitude, as well as the province state column. I'm only gonna aggregate the cases by country. So we can type confirm df equals confirm df dot drop columns equals open and close square brackets. And in there, 
we'll type lat long and province slash state. And then we can check how the data frame looks like. Let's execute the cells. Great, we've removed them. Now, it's not really practical to have dates as columns. Instead, we want them as rows under a common column name called date. So in this very next command, we're gonna merge all rows for the same country. Remember that there, there are regions such as Australia, US, China, that had multiple rows on the original CSV file. And then we're gonna aggregate those numbers, we'll sum them, and finally, we'll transpose the data frame. Let's execute this one and check how the data frame looks like. Okay, there's an error. So I've got a typo on confirmed DF variable. Okay, that is something else. We see we've transposed that. So we have a new column with date values. Uh, we just need to change the column name. And now we have countries as columns. First, let's amend the column name. So confirm data frame dot index dot name equals date. And then we'll reset the index with confirm data frame equals confirm data frame dot reset index. Let's check the data frame again. Okay, we now have the date column as we wanted, the country columns as well. It kind of makes more sense now, but we're still one step away to have the data frame how I want it to be. So in this step, I'm gonna melt the data frame. So melt is a pandas function that basically unpivots the data frame from a wide to a long format. So let's say confirmed melt data frame equals confirm data frame dot melt. And in here we can pass in the identifier column using ID bars, and this is going to be date. Let's execute the cell as well as show you the data frame. Great, we now have just three columns, so date, country, and then the value, so the, the actual metric. Finally, let's rename the column. So confirm mail data frame dot rename columns equal open and close curly braces. And then column value is going to be renamed as confirmed. And then we'll pass in in place equals true. Let's execute the cell. Great. At this point, we could already plot some figures using the data frame, but there are some issues with the date format. Right now, the date values are strings, and we need to make sure that they are converted to date times. So to demonstrate this, let me get the maximum date, so today's date. And I'll say max date equals confirmed mail data frame, column date dot max, and then print out the value. See, it gets uh, September 9th, which is not today's date. And this is just because pandas is treating the date column as a string. So let's convert it using confirmed mail data frame column date equals pd dot to date time, and then confirm mail data frame column date. So now we've converted to data frame, but it has changed the format as well. So now let's put it back to month, day, year. We'll say confirm mail data frame date equals confirm mail data frame date dot dt dot string f time and then the format is going to be month day year. Great. Now if I copy the same commands and compute max date, I should be getting today's date. Great. Okay. Now that we have the data frame ready, we can start creating some visualizations to plot the actual pandemic numbers. Let's define total confirmed data frame as the data frame where the date equals the maximum date we just calculated. So total confirm df equals confirm melt df. And in this data frame, we're going to get the confirm melt df date values that are equal to max date. Let's check the result. And we get a new data frame with just a single row per country where the date is today's date the maximum date. Now the total confirmed cases will then be the summation of this column right here. So let's define total confirmed equals total confirmed data frame column confirmed dot sum. And we get this number that is 55 millions. If we check the actual dashboard it's not going to match because the dashboard is in real time and we saw earlier than our data set gets refreshed overnight. So it's not going to match, but it's close enough. Let's now create a chart that shows the number of total cases per country, like this one on the left. 
So I'll say figure equals pxd.var, total confirmed data frame, the x axis gonna be country slash region, the y axis that's gonna be confirmed, and let's show the figure. And we get a plot. But this is, um, there's lots of countries and it's not really visual. So what we can do as well is instead of showing all the values, just get the top 20 or the top 30. So let's create a, a new figure and instead use total confirm df data frame dot sort values and we'll sort them by column confirmed ascending equals false. So in descending order, and then we'll get the top 20 countries. Finally, we can also set text equal confirmed to get the label values. And now we get something more interesting. We now see the top 30 countries by confirmed cases from US, which ranks the top all the way down to Israel. If we take a closer look at the numbers, 11 millions US, 8 millions India, 5 millions Brazil, etc. If we check the dashboard, those numbers are pretty accurate. Again, this dashboard shows data in real time. See, last updated today, 8 a.m., whereas our dataset was lastly updated yesterday at 12 last night. Great, cool stuff. Since we're using the time series dataset, let's also print the historical trend for these countries. Let's create a new figure equals px.scatter. And in here, we won't be using the total confirmed data frame. We'll use the, the initial one, the confirmed melt data frame. We'll set X equals date column, Y equals confirm column, and then we can color the scatter lines using the country region values. Let's show the figure. Great. We get all the trends for all the countries in the data set. If we hover the data points, we'll get a tooltip with the country and the total cumulative confirmed cases for that country. It is clear that the first one is US, there's India, there's Brazil, but then right here, it's a bit complicated to distinguish the, the countries. If you are particularly interested on in knowing how a specific country perform over time, you can also show the time series data for that country. So we'll use a similar approach than the one we use when we computed the max date. Let's create a new figure, px.line, then confirm meld df, and inside that data frame, we'll also call confirm LDF country region equals, I don't know, Poland. Then X equals date and Y equals confirmed. Let's show the figure. And there you go. This is the time series data for Poland. You can change the country, say India. And now we see India's data, Spain, and so on. Great. Okay, so far we've been playing with the confirmed CSV file, so the confirmed data frame, and I've just skipped forward in time and we'll repeat the same steps for the deaths and recovered CSV files as well. Let's review the notebook together. First, we install the requirements, then we load the dataset. Now there's three files, one for each data frame. Then we clean them as we did earlier. So we'll drop the columns we don't need. We'll group them by country and transpose them. We will melt them and reset the index. And finally, we'll remain the measurement column accordingly. So before it was just confirmed. Now it's going to be deaths for the death data frame and recovered for the recovered data frame. Finally, we'll convert the date column values to date times. Once that is done, we can compute the max date as we did earlier and we'll compute the total confirmed cases, the total deaths cases, and the total recovered cases. Lastly, we can also compute the remaining active cases, so total active equals total confirmed minus total deaths minus total recovered. Great. Now at this point, we could plot the same graphs as we plot a few minutes ago. So deaths by country and recovered cases by country, but it's going to be more of the same. So instead, let's draw a new graph. And for that, I've imported a new library, plotly.graphobject as go. Now let's define a new figure equals go.figure. And in this main figure, we can add multiple visualizations. 
So I'm gonna use these four KPIs and put them in a grid of two rows by two columns. So let's say figure.addTrace, go.indicator. And in here we'll use mode equals number, value equals total confirmed. I'll set the value format as number equals value format. This string, so I'm gonna use commas for thousands. We'll set an indicator title with text total confirmed cases and we'll place this indicator using domain row zero column zero. We'll repeat the same indicators. So let me copy this three times and change the value to total deaths. Let's change the title as well and we'll put it on row zero column one. Then total recovered, recovered cases on row one column zero. And finally total active, active cases row one column one. Finally, we need to call figure.updateLayout. We'll use grid equals rows two, columns two, and pattern independent. Let's show the figure. And here we have the four KPIs. Okay guys, that was it for today. In this video, we saw how to work with Jupyter Notebooks and learn some basics around Python Pandas. We saw how to import data, and do data cleaning and data manipulation to prepare the data frames before visualizing the data using Plotly library. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as it always helps, and share this video with others. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.